So today I'll go through derived rule 29. And uh, for this one, I'm sort of assuming that you've read up through derived rule 28 on your own. Uh, I'm choosing to do this one together here in lecture because it's uh, it's a little it has some different kind of things going on that, compared to the ones before with the negation getting involved, and also this is probably one of the most practically useful one of one of the ones that you directly use most frequently in your arguments. So this one is quantifiers. The title I'm giving it is quantifiers and negation. part one, and it says, it tells you basically how to deal with a negation in front of a quantifier, in front of a universal quantifier. And it tells you that the negation symbol can be pushed in to the inner proposition at the cost of flipping the quantifier between universal and existential. So this probably sounds familiar. It's, a, it's like what happens with De Morgan's Law when you're pushing a negation into a conjunction. It pushes in like this, but the and gets flipped to being an or. This is very similar. The for all gets flipped into being there exists. And um, <clears throat> this is not a rule, it's a derived rule. So I'm not just uh, stipulating that this is how it works. This is actually how it has to work based on everything that we previously stipulated. So let's see a derivation for this. So I'm going to actually replace the uh, proposition placeholder phi by an English proposition, uh, just like I did with the previous uh, ones of these quantifier rules when I was showing you the derivations. So I'm going to replace phi by x is not good, or x is good, rather. So then not phi becomes x is not good. Okay, so all I've done here is rewritten uh, the, the derived rule. So I'm going to write it like this rather than uh, the first line. So this double arrow here is what we're going to prove. Now, I usually like to start with what I think is the simpler direction of the two directions. So here there's going to be two parts to the proof, right? The This arrow part and this arrow part. And I think the simpler one is going to be this one. Um, it doesn't really matter, though, of course, what, what order you, you, you go with. So for the left, leftward direction, I get to assume that uh, there is x such that x is not good. In other words, I'm assuming something is not good. So assume that there is something that's not good. So remember, since the x is under quantifier here, I'm not making any assumptions about x yet. x has not come into the picture. In fact, there's no actual mention of x on this entire board here. Every time you think you see an x, it's under quantifier. So there's not really an x there. So here, for example, this simply says something is not good. It has nothing to say about x in particular. OK, so now my goal is to prove that it's not the case that everything is good. I'm trying to prove it's not the case that everything is good. So uh, how do I prove? So I, I have a way for proving for alls, but how do I prove a not for all? I don't have a special rule just for that, right? I have a way of proving a rule for proving for alls, universal generalization, and I have a rule for using for alls, universal instantiation, but I don't have anything that helps me work with not for all. So what can I do? Proof by contradiction. If I take the strategy of proof by contradiction, then in order to prove not for all something, 
I get to assume, for the sake of contradiction, for all something. So uh, that's something I can work with, that I have rules that tell me how to work with it. So suppose, for the sake of contradiction, that in fact everything is good. So now our goal is to get a contradiction, and if we get a contradiction then we can conclude that in fact it's not the case, that everything is good. Okay, so now I've got two things that I can use. I've got this assumption, which is something that I got to assume for the sake of proving this implication. And I've also got this assumption, which is something I get to use because I'm doing a proof by contradiction. So I have an existence statement, and I have a for all statement. And so to make use of the existence statement, I will use existential instantiation. To make use of the for all statement, I will use universal instantiation. So universal instantiation, I have nothing to use it on yet, right? The way a universal instantiation works is that since I know everything is good, then I can conclude about any particular thing that it's good. I'm good, you're good, the video that you're watching is good, this pen is good, but I have nothing in the proof that, uh, that I can apply this universal to that would be helpful to apply it to at this point. So let's do existential instantiation instead. So there is something that is not good. Okay, what I can do with that is get a specific something that's not good and give it a specific name. Since there is something that is not good, we can get an x. So I'm choosing to give it the name x. I don't have to, but it, that's a perfectly fine name. x has not been used before for anything else. We can get an x such that x is not good. Okay, now I have something to apply this for all statement to. Uh, since everything is not good, this x that I, sorry, since everything is good, according to this for all statement, since everything is good, x here in particular is good. So, so far, here, here's what happened. We have an EI here, existential instantiation. And here, this sentence, this is a universal instantiation. Okay, do you see the contradiction? X is not good, and X is good. X is good, and X is not good. So we have a contradiction. Okay, so that proves the leftward implication. Now for the rightward implication. And I left this one for a second because it's a little bit more involved. So if I want to do the rightward implication, then I get to assume that it's not the case that for all x, x is good. Then I would have to prove that there exists something that's not good. Now it's possible to do it directly uh, that way, but I found when I thought about how to do it that way that I had a proof by contradiction inside a proof by contradiction. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's confusing and not so elegant. If it can be avoided, then that's better. So one way to avoid it is to prove, instead of to prove the right, proving the rightward implication, we can prove the contrapositive of the rightward implication. So we will actually prove Instead of proving the left implies the right, we will prove not the right implies not the left. So we will actually prove this. And then this is the negation of the left side there. So 
So we will prove that if it's not the case that there is a non-good thing, then everything must be good. Hopefully that sounds intuitively similar to proving um, that if it's not the case that everything is good, then there must be something that's not good. So uh, to be clear, we're making use of derived rule 14 here, which tells us, hey, uh, proving an implication is the same as proving it's contrapositive. If you, this is a double arrow here, right? So if you prove one side, then you can deduce the other side. If you prove the other side, you can deduce the one side. So we're using derived rule 14. So, okay, let's assume the left side. Assume it's not the case that there is a non-good thing. Now we'd like to prove that everything is good. We'd like to prove that everything is good. So how do we prove a universal? We, we use universal generalization. So we consider an arbitrary x and then we try to prove about that x that it, that it is good without making any external assumptions about x. So let's start a universal generalization argument. Consider any x. Now, since I'm labeling everything in red, all the quantifier rules that I'm using, here we start a universal generalization. But it's not just a one-liner like these two guys up here. It actually starts here, and I'll, I'll show you where it ends. So consider any x. Our goal is to prove that x is good. So this is something we can actually do by contradiction. Um, I'm trying to use the fact that I know that it's not the case that there is a non-good thing. And I think if x were non-good, then that would be a contradiction. Because if x were non-good, then there would be a non-good thing. But I'm assuming that there are no non-good things. So here's a proof by contradiction. So suppose for the sake of contradiction that x is not good. Now, if I get a contradiction, then I will know that, okay, it must be that x is good. And as long as I did that, uh, without bringing in ex any external assumptions about x, then at the end I can conclude, okay, x was arbitrary, and I, and I proved that it was good. So then everything must be good. Okay, so now I've got the assumption that x is not good to play with. So here's what I have to work with. X is not good, and I also have it's not the case that there's something that's not good. And from here I'm trying to get a contradiction. Well, if if I'm going to contradict this thing, that it's not the case that there's something that's not good, then to contradict it I should prove that it is the case that there's something that's not good. In other words, I should prove this part if I manage to prove this part, then that would contradict the overall negated thing. So how do I prove an existential statement, an existentially quantified statement? Uh, use existential generalization. In other words, if you want to prove that there is something that's not good, then you just have to find an example that would demonstrate that there is something that's not good. Ah, but we already have our example. X is not good. So it follows from x is not good, it follows that there's something that's not good. So right here, this was existential generalization. Finding an example uh, of an x that has a certain property in order to prove that there exists something that has that property. That's existential generalization. Uh, and then we have our contradiction. So then there both exists something that is not good, and there does not exist something that is not good. Yeah. 
And you see this is exactly the form of, form of a contradiction, right? Phi and not phi. Okay, so therefore, uh, x must be good. So our proof by contradiction, the proof by contradiction started here, and it ended here when we reached the contradiction. And what we assumed for the sake of contradiction that x is not good, since we successfully reached a contradiction, we can now conclude x must actually be good. But that's what we needed for our universal generalization argument. Consider any x, argue, 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 and we reached x as good. So we can now generalize. So we considered an arbitrary x and proved it's good, therefore everything is good. And that's where the UG, the universal generalization, ends. So the universal generalization started here with consider any x, and it ended here when we finally uh, proved that everything, that, that the property uh, x is good holds for all x. And that's it. That's what we needed. So we have now proven this implication. And that's the contrapositive of the forward implication up here. I hope it also sounds intuitive to you that these should be equivalent. That saying, you know, it's not the case that everything is good, or not everything is good, that that's equivalent to uh, something is not good. That should feel like it's equivalent. So here we just uh, went through derived rule 29, which tells you how to stick a negation inside a for all type statement. There's also derived rule 30, which is about sticking negation into a there exists type statement. There is actually a way to use derived rule 29 in order, in order to prove derived rule 30 without doing so much uh, extra work, uh, without having to repeat all of this work that we did here. There is one, uh, so, so that's neat. I mean, you can read that on your own, but it's actually quite fun to go through the work of seeing how, you know, proof by contradiction and the ba four basic quantifier rules uh, make this work. So one of the possible presentable problems uh, for, I think, presentation three will be this one here, exercise 27, where you try to do basically what I just did, um, not using this, you know, not, not repeating this proof, but basically not making use of derived rule 29, and trying to do what I just did, but with with the quantifiers exchanged. So instead of working with not everything is good, you'll be working with nothing is good, and then trying to show that that's equivalent to everything is not good. <laughs>